What's up, TikTok family? I just got off work. Now that I actually have the time to talk about this, let's do it. Y'all remember the mass shooting that just happened in Buffalo? Wait a minute, I think this is the wrong guy. We're gonna talk about this. Mmm, I don't think that's him either. Okay, sorry, sorry, seriously. No, that's not him either. Ah, there we go. There he is, right there. I think you all pick up what I'm putting down right now. We all heard what happened in Buffalo by now. Another white shooter that killed a lot of innocent people. 13 injured and 10 murdered. You know, I got a little bored today when I was getting ready for work and I started looking some information up about this person. And what I found was pretty alarming, to be honest with you. First thing I found out is that this individual decided to drive over three hours to the location, which he had already planned. This said individual had an assault rifle and on that assault rifle, there was a racial slur on it. Not to mention there are other reports that I seem to see that he actually had some sort of protective armor because he knew exactly what he was doing. And if that wasn't enough, he actually had a, what, 180-page manifesto with anti-Semitic and anti-Black rhetoric. You know, the common trend I see with all of the white shooters, no matter how many people they unalive, is the way that they are treated. Each one of those photos I showed at the very beginning of this video, each one of them have unalived a lot of people, and they were handled calmly. They weren't thrown to the ground, they weren't shot, they weren't pepper sprayed, beaten, any of that. No, they were handcuffed appropriately. And I'm pretty sure one of them actually got Burger King on his way to jail. Another common trend I seem to see when it comes to white shooters is that their mental health is questioned. Oh, you know, that person's mental health must not have been the greatest if he decided to unalive people. No shit. We keep seeing it time and time again as history seems to repeat itself. White armed terrorists are the ones that seem to be handled with care rather than the black, indigenous, and brown communities are not. Each one of those people took innocent lives and they were handled with care. Where's the justice for Dante Wright? Where's the justice for Tamir Rice? Where's the justice for Breonna Taylor? Eric Garner, George Floyd, Ayanna Jones, Elijah McClain. The list continues to grow and keep getting bigger and bigger. There's even a Harvard study out there that is showing that people in the black community are three times more likely to be killed during a police encounter. And if you don't believe me, go look it up yourself. You know, there's this constant stigmatization of people needing to keep an eye on the black and indigenous and brown communities, that they're the bad guys. But time and time again, we're continuously shown the white supremacist terrorism that happens in our own backyards. Disgusting.